everyone, it's Lehman with Lee's Toted Skies. Welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. I am going to be making these fabric um, dangles, I guess you could say. Fabric charms. These are all fabric and it's just layered with different elements. This is my design team project for Mixed Media Minnesota. Some of the images in this dangle are part of a kit that I've been using. You've definitely seen it before. I love this kit and I've torn it and used bits of it. All right, so let's get started. And we're also gonna be making a spine for my upcoming journal. Um, I have most of it done. I just need to put this over it. So we're gonna do that today as well. I wanna show you a couple of the images in the kit. And I did a ton of printing on fabric for this project and these print beautifully on fabric. So this is one of the images. I love it. This we're going to be using part of this one. I think this is my favorite one. And there's this one. And all these other ones are um, fussy cut already. So I'm just going to Go ahead and link the kit below so you can check it out. I've loved using this kit. It's it's all over these these new journals. <laughs> I have a bulb pin. I have a gold safety pin, a little one. I have three buttons. I have an eye, like part of a hook and eye. And we're gonna be using a hook here. And then we also need, so you're gonna need pieces of fabric. Okay, we're gonna use that piece. I showed in a past video how I print on fabric. I'll link that video down below, but it turns out beautifully. I'm gonna be using a strip of this. So let's go ahead and tear that first. So I pretty much treat this like collaging and I'm not very selective about which piece stays in. So I'm just gonna cut from the edge and then tear this fabric. And then I am going to figure out where to tear it in half. I made it asymmetrical. Yeah. So I'm going to cut it right there. One part is going to be longer than the other tear that off. So we have the biggest pieces of the fabric dangle. I then took just regular cream fabric or white fabric and I stamped. I just took my rubber stamps and I stamped them on here. I have a thimble, a spool of thread, this um, word in a really cool font, pins, and some scissors. I should have brought that stamp set over. It's a vintage sewing rubber stamp set. Um, if I can find it on Amazon, I think I bought it on Amazon. I will link it down below. But then I took these three images and put eyelets in those places.
I then, and I'm gonna have to look at my samples because it's kind of hard to remember exactly what I did. But, okay, so I went from the back with the needle and thread and I put the needle up on the very corner of this stamped image, the corner of this spool of thread. I took a small button. Oh yeah, and I, I'm using a small button as well. It's really small. And I'm gonna feed it through. I should start with it upside down. So I'm just gonna thread it through the needle and go ahead and pull that through. And I'm just gonna eyeball it so that the thread kind of ends near the bottom of the spool of thread. And then I'm gonna put the needle through the other hole in the button. and do that a couple of times. I'm just gonna do it a couple times. Okay, then I'm gonna tie a knot and this part might be really challenging <laughs> because I am reaching You know what? I will just finish that off camera. Um, but I might need more thread. All right, let's set that aside for now. The next thing, I, so the goal is to get it to look like this. It's just kind of hanging off the, the spool of thread. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm just gonna get another needle because we're gonna be sewing buttons. I mean, I guess the good thing about this is that it's very bright in here, so I can definitely see to thread the needle. Okay, then I am going to take the thimble and I think what I decided was that I did not like the eyelet in here. So I'm actually gonna sew the button over the eyelet. So if you don't like the eyelet, just skip the eyelet part. So let's come up through the back. Wow, okay. <laughs> Sewing like this is definitely harder on camera than I thought it would be because I feel like I'm untethered. <laughs> like I don't really have a surface. All right, now I am gonna do it all over again. I think I'm gonna speed this part up. We are going to take the piece that says pins. And of course, if you don't have these exact stamped images, 
you can do however you feel like doing it. Different places for the buttons. I should have just left one button to sew. And then I am going to take, what's the other one? Oh, okay, I'm not sewing again, thank God. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm pretty sure we just assemble. So I'm gonna take my bulb pin. This is my bulb pin right here. I am going to take the bigger piece of fabric and just kind of pierce it behind it here a reasonable distance below so that it's not gonna like so that it's stable and centered I'm also going to do the same thing here and make sure that they're centered and stacked on top of each other. Wow, this is way harder than I thought it would be. All right, so there we have the bottom bigger piece and then the shorter piece. Next comes, I do need to look at my sample for this. Oh no, there's more sewing. <laughs> All right, let's take this. We need a hook. Now sewing, I usually enjoy sewing. I love doing cross stitch. I love having a needle in my hands, but for some reason, this is really difficult. I mean, partly because I'm mid air, but partly because these pieces are very flimsy. All right, so we're just gonna sew this hook in like this. I have no idea if this is the correct way to do it, but I mean, that's pretty much the only way to do it, right? Maybe. <laughs> so I'm just going over and over it a few times. that off and while I'm sitting maybe it's going to be easier to knot this although this this knotting job is pretty precarious because I'm not knotting it I'm knotting it on a like a loose button here not loose but like a a button that's kind of suspended in the air Snip that off. Next part of our assembling job. We are going to take the bull pin, put it through this eyelet right here, and take our safety pin, put it through, oh, I saved this to show you guys how I do the eyelet. 
So let me go ahead and actually grab the eyelet. I have my crocodile right here. All right, we are going to use one of these black eyelets and we are going to change the setting to C4. C4 because it's a small eyelet. I am going to take this and I did this. I'm just going to poke it through with this first. And then I'm poking it through with the larger one. And that should be enough. It might be too big. No, I think it's good. So I put it through like that. And I hope that was good. Yeah. So we have that. And I am going to thread it through the safety pin like that and then thread it through the hook and eye or really the hook and if the hook is kind of loose I do squeeze it down a little bit because I don't want the safety pin to slip out of it so I'm going to safety pin this on here as it falls off the bolt pin. <laughs> so there we have that. And then oh we are going to sew we're going to actually sew this on here. So I'm going to go in, I should have done this before I, um, I should have done this at the same time as I was sewing the button, but this works. It's just when you guys do it, <laughs> you should save yourself some time. And I'm just kind of setting it right there. Kind of like at an angle. Okay, so there we have that. And what we're gonna do next is put this eyelet through the bull pin so that this whole area just kind of hangs down like that. And then I am putting the other button through the bull pin as well. And then putting this eye through the bull pin and I'll just throw an extra one on because it's loose and let's be honest it'll probably get lost and there we have it so I really like this because it's flat and you could put it on the inside of your journal as well I also like it because it's kind of like charms, charms are 3D, but these stamped images are one dimensional. So it's kind of like you're doing a one dimensional tag in a way, you know what I mean? So 
there we have it. And you can watch for my flip throughs, my upcoming flip throughs to see how I use this. I will use it on the outside of the journal. Now let me continue on to show you how I'm going to do this. All right, so you guys are going to get to see the cover of this journal. Just a little sneak peek. I know I do a lot of sneak peeks on my channel, but what I am going to do is let me figure out the best way to open this. I am going to be putting this over the um, over the back of the spine because I think it looks really cool like that just on the back and I think I'm gonna put some lace on the top and the bottom just because I want it to be like a little bit girly and I'm going to put the closure through the back so that when I put this over it, that kind of holds the closure in. But I I was going to use eyelets, but I don't think I am if I put lace I won't really need to use the eyelet but yeah so that's what I'm gonna do for um, the spine of this journal and I think it's gonna look really cool just to have like a little bit of writing a little bit of um, the retro the vintage retro images but yeah so I hope this gives you some ideas on what you can do with your rubber stamps. I feel like I don't use my rubber stamps enough, so I'm definitely going to be experimenting with this kind of idea in the future again. But if you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more videos. Thank you so much for watching today, and I will talk to you next time. Bye everyone!